But um, our next guest is Roger Hickey, co-director of the campaign for America's Future. Roger uh, and I have done some collaborating recently on the excise tax, the so-called Cadillac health tax, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Roger is in to on top of a very interesting story with the Washington Post, which has uh, some sort of arrangement with a very active and biased uh, news source, Pete Peterson, and something called the Fiscal Times, and we want to learn more about that. So, Roger, welcome to the Young Turks. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Michael. Good to be with you. Good to have you along. Now, uh, what my understanding, and perhaps you can help us more, is, first of all, who is Pete Peterson? Well, first of all, Pete Peterson is a very rich American. Uh, he uh, he made his money on Wall Street. He uh, helped to start uh, something called the Blackstone Group, uh, which uh, invests people's money and uh, and his own. And it, it's, uh, it's a hedge fund as well as many other things. But uh, he's a very wealthy guy. He was Richard Nixon's Secretary of Commerce. And uh, the most important thing about him is that he has been on a single-minded crusade using his billions of dollars and his foundation to convince Americans uh, that their Social Security and Medicare uh, are, are two uh, social insurance uh, programs that we just can't afford, that, that uh, he's confused people on purpose uh, to make them think that uh, Social Security and Medicare are the major reasons that we have a, uh, uh, a deficit and a debt in, the, in this country. So a right-wing ideologue who's confusing the public on the topic of uh, social benefit spending, where does the Washington Post fit in? Well, it, you know, the, the Washington Post has been Pete, uh, uh, quoting Pete Peterson for years, but now, uh, just the last uh, day of the year, they started running articles um, published or written by something called the Fiscal Times, a new sort of information uh, source, um, uh, really farming out their reporting uh, to this Fiscal Times outfit, whose founder and major backer happens to be Peter G. Peterson. Uh, so here's a guy who is, is trying to propagandize the country to cut Social Security and Medicare benefits. Um, and uh, the very first piece by this Fiscal Times uh, the, in the Post, contracting out their responsibilities to be objective, uh, it quotes all of the, the people and groups that Pete Peterson uh, backs, um, including the Concord Coalition, including the Peterson Pew uh, uh, project on the federal deficit. A and the whole story is, uh, is about uh, this new move in Congress, led by uh, Senator Conrad, uh, to create a, an undemocratic commission that would uh, come up with ways to slash uh, the, the federal budget. So, so you're, you're referring, Roger, to an article entitled Support Grows for Tackling Nation's Debt, and you're saying that the Washington Post ran this article with this headline, that it was put together by Pete Peterson's organization, and quotes an awful lot of people who agree with Pete Peterson, perhaps in part because they get money from Pete Peterson. Uh, it's it's completely circular. Uh, uh, there's not one mention in the article about the 40 national organizations uh, that have come out uh, against this idea of a commission to slash the budget undemocratically. Uh, it was a one-sided article, what you would expect from Pete Peterson, only the Post is fobbing it off on their readers as just like an AP story, something and, objective. And has the Post answered, uh, Roger, to any of... of of these charges, allegations, any of this, uh, have, they, have they talked about how this is, you know, how these kind of things happen? We've, uh, we've sent a letter from 20 social insurance experts protesting this, and the ombudsman has gotten back to us saying, well, I'm going to take a look, but I'm not the guy you need to talk to. Uh, we are now requesting a meeting uh, with Don Graham, who is the chairman of the Washington Post company. Why would not the ombudsman be the person that you would speak with? Well, he's saying that he, um, he is going to take a look at it in terms of the ethics of it, but, uh, but in terms of our request that they, uh, they sever this relationship, 
uh, it really does make sense to talk to the chairman of the board or the or the publisher. Yeah. Uh, so we hope to hear from both of both sides, and uh, and we just uh, you know we're reminding the post that they've had scandals like this in the past, where they were setting up uh, uh, salons they called them uh, last year uh, that you could buy yourself into a meetings with uh, editorial board and and reporting staff. Right. For a mere twenty-five thousand dollars a shot, uh, at that point, uh, the the post when it was revealed uh, backed up and apologized to the public. This is even worse. This is farming out your objective news reporting uh, to somebody who has an axe to grind. Is there any uh, precedent for that in American journalistic history? I, I was trying to think of one uh, before the segment, and I couldn't. Uh, can you think of any other time a major newspaper, and Washington Post is probably one of the top four or five newspapers in the nation at least, has done something of this kind? Well, you know, uh, the Uni United Press International, which is a once proud wire service uh, where Walter Cronkite worked uh, when he got his start, uh, is now owned by the Moonies. It's now owned by the Unification Church. And there are still newspapers who take uh, news stories from UPI. Uh, certainly the Washington Times does. And, uh, and so that's, a, that's the equivalent, is if the Post were still taking, quote, news from the United Press International, even with the, uh, the Mooney spin to it. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think that some of it's unavoidable. I mean, the editorial pe people who sit on editorial boards uh, do come into contact with people all the time. Uh, it's just that there's something almost untoward about the way this, this, the P. Peterson has this access and is almost writing an article that's appearing. And and that that's where I don't I don't remember any kind of precedent other than you know the, the, the on a much smaller level of people sort of infiltrating a newspaper in in certain ways that I only remember anecdotally. I don't remember exactly, but it, it just seems in fact that that this is this breaks that wall. To and and it's important to note that the Post has signed a contract with this, these people. It's an ongoing relationship. That that uh, fiscal times is what they call it will cover the budget and deficit and the economy uh, for the Washington Post. So, so you're saying, Roger, that this is like an adjunct of the Washington Post now? That that it's like they're contracting out their reporting duties. And is that is that happening on, with any other uh, sort of segment of their paper? I mean, do they have somebody else doing that for uh, anything having to do with the economy? Is somebody doing that for for military, et cetera? You know, I'm I'm not aware of it. Um, uh, they, I mean, it, it's like buying bias is what they're doing. Well, it's certainly like uh, giving up on your responsibility as a newspaper to employ journalists that, that you can say are objective. Yeah, so, I, and I, I wonder rhetorically if this is what we are, where we're heading uh, in, as, as news, newspapers as we knew them and uh, as we grew up with them are changing some of them, many of them disappearing as the medium is finding its new footing if this is going to be the precedent for, for it, it shocks me that a paper like the Washington Post would do that. I mean, I know what their bias is, but I, I'm talking about the, the, the way, the, the, the mechanics of this. That just seems to me to, to be such a foreign, uh, would be foreign to anybody who is in journalism. You know, we, we always quibble with, uh, with the coverage of, of newspapers, um, and everybody has an, uh, a response to uh, the track record of a newspaper. But at least the newspaper can say, these are our reporters. Uh, we are doing the best that we can uh, to assure that there's no bias. Right. Uh, this is an example of, of farming out that responsibility uh, to, a, to an outfit that is, is clearly uh, run and financed by somebody with a clear X to grind. Now, Roger, you mentioned that um, 20 social insurance experts had signed a letter about this. Have any leading uh, uh, journalists, journalism professors, people who are known for studying the ethics of journalism, have, have any of them commented on this yet? Uh, one of the people who's uh, in our group is, uh, is Bob Kuttner, who's a, a well-known journalist, uh, publisher of American Prospect. Uh, but no, we are just beginning to get the word out. Um, we we just became aware of this uh, on the last day of the year when they published their first um, article. You would think they would publish something uh, non-controversial as their first try, but uh, but they uh, they were pretty bold. 
And now we are spreading the word. I've had several pieces on, on Huffington Post and uh, uh, Dean Baker, uh, an economist with the group, uh, with our group, has been uh, blogging about it as well. So uh, we've just begun to spread the word, and I think you're going to see many, many journalists and uh, and media reformers and people uh, people in journalism schools uh, real, re- raising real questions about uh, this and and demanding really that the Post um, either give up being a uh, an objective newspaper or or sever the ties with. With Peterson. Yeah, it seems like that would be that would be what they need to do. And you, it's surprising that Peterson, somebody who's so smart with his money, would invest uh, even a little bit in newspapers, uh, because that seems to be a, a dying investment. I, it could be that what he's investing in is not newspapers so much as a political outcome. But Roger, it's a fascinating story. Thank you so much for being with us. We will be tracking this in the weeks and uh, months to come. And your listeners can go to ourfuture.org and and see all that we've written about this. Ourfuture.org. Roger Hickey, thanks so much for being with us on the Thanks for having me.